Hello, everyone. Welcome to our monthly You, Me, and IP webinar. Today, Justin and I are going to be talking about the death of trademarks by genericide. Um, as you probably already know, Justin files trademark applications. I fight about trademarks in court. And so what we're really talking about today is how trademarks die from popularity and over and improper usage. So it's one of those situations, Justin, where it's like, be careful what you wish for. You want your mark to be famous. You want everyone to use it. But, you know, that can result in some problems, don't you think? Yeah, so let, let's kind of talk about this. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing where, um, you know, there's this public policy that people can't take a word that that actually means something and and sort of steal it from other everyone right so if i have a word um like lawyer right i can't i can't take the word lawyer and have that just be for me and, and get a trademark for the word lawyer and exclude other people from being able to use that word because it, it actually means what i do and so it's the same kind of concept but sometimes you know, but marketing people are always, you know, and, and brand owners are always trying to push this where you, you want it to kind of describe what you're doing, but so that people will instantly know what it is. But if you get, right. you kind of go over that line and you can't protect your mark. So what we're talking about today is this weird phenomenon that happens. And there are a lot of trademarks like this that over the years where their mark got so famous or if you will, flew so close to the sun that it lost its ability to be a trademark. Like it actually became the word that the brand was was representing. And when that right. happens, the brand owner actually loses the trademark because it becomes the word for what it is that um, that they're selling. Whether it's a and good it or seems or like it usually happens when some marketing person gets so clever that they come up with a new word that describes the good or the service and then that word becomes the thing itself so the example that i'll give there is escalator mm -hmm. most people probably don't know that that actually was a registered trademark of the otis elevator company and an escalator you're escalating is actually i mean the generic term is moving staircase but i don't think anybody refers to escalators as moving staircases um, we should though. We should. Then we'll help out that. Otis, but, but I think it's it's too late. It's already. And that's dead. probably my favorite one, actually, Escalator, because it it, it demonstrates that it was a trademark. Mm -hmm. But most people, when you hear the word Escalator, you sort of pause and you're like, "What else would I call that?" And that's exactly. How you, and that's how you know that it that it became generic. That even though it was a trademark, somebody made that word up. It became generic because you don't know what else to call it. And there's a whole graveyard of trademarks, just like Escalator. Yeah, Should I run through, through some, some of them? Yeah, if you have some, let's go through it. I do. Um, another one is Yo-Yo. Most okay. people don't know that, that. I don't know what you would even call it, uh, what the generic term. Yeah, I feel like that would be. be an awkward one to try to come up with a word to call that that wasn't Yo-Yo. It, it would be. Um, another one is Thermos. Thermos is a very, that's, that's a famous one. That, that is. And it, it actually is registered in some countries, but not in the United States. And the generic term for thermos is vacuum flask. Yeah. Doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah. It, I can see how that really would uh, um, Another one is aspirin. Okay. Aspirin's a really interesting one because it has a real name. It does. I can't pronounce it, but it does. To most people. Right. Um, and yet everybody calls it aspirin and, and Bayer, I think, lost the trademark in the U.S. for, for aspirin. Yeah, that's that's a shame, but it's still a popular product. And it's, uh, it's, it's just another one of those that died. Another one is cellophane. Although I feel like cellophane could have a comeback because I don't think anybody says cellophane anymore. So that might be an example of one that like became super popular, became generic, and then everyone stopped using it. So maybe, you know, maybe there's room for your next company sharing. Right. I, I'm looking to see if I if I have the name of what it would actually be called. I guess you could call it plastic wrap, but I don't think that really covers it because plastic wrap 
plastic wrap is actually polyvinyl chloride and cellophane is made from cellulose. Look so, at you. Yeah, I know. I, know. I sound I, so science-y, science don't I? Yeah, I um, feel like cellophane is a little bit before my time, so. <laughs> trampoline is another. Okay. I don't know if you've been on a trampoline lately, but. What would you call that? What would you, like if you, and this is another good example, because if you look at a trampoline, you draw a blank as to what it would actually be called. Right. The generic term for it was rebound tumbler, which again, doesn't roll off the tongue. And I don't think that particularly works. I might call it, you know, jumping platform or something along those lines. Jumping platform. That's how, doesn't that, it's more, yeah. it's descriptive, but. What, no, what was it? Tumbling, what was it? Rebound tumbler. Re rebound tumbler. I feel like you could probably, the irony of that one is you could probably get a trademark for rebound tumbler because <laughs> for trampolines, because nobody would know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rebound tumbler is a trampoline. Uh, <laughs> another one is dry ice, mm -hmm. which is really, are you just going to call it solid CO2? Right. Like, I guess you just ask for frozen CO2 and people would stare at you blankly. Right. They'd be like, you'd say, I, I want dry ice. Oh, dry ice. Okay. I got it. Right. 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 Okay. Um, kerosene. All right. I don't know what you would call that. Lamp. Yeah, I don't know the difference between those, um, you know, all your different uh, flammable oils. So yeah, I that one definitely kerosene. Okay, because it's a very specific type. Um, linoleum. All right, linoleum. Yeah, that. I don't know. I one, flooring, plastic flooring, junky yeah, plastic flooring, flooring because it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, another good one is laundromat. All right, that actually does. And laundromat, although I don't I don't know what you would call it other than laundromat, but that one does have that feel of somebody made this word up. It wasn't, that's not an, an it does word. because you could say laundry place or yeah. I don't know, laundrette. Um I don't know that I would say that, but okay. Zipper. Okay, zipper. See, that's an interesting one because they came up with the name zipper back in in the 1920s because it makes a zip sound when you're pulling the zipper um and they fought and lost protection for zipper and was the company was only able to retain protection for zipper boots um but zipper is generic and who knew that it actually at one time was a registered trademark that one I actually would not have guessed, but it, it makes sense. What um, else would you call it? I, a pull-up fastener? Yeah. Or I don't a know. Rack? I don't know. Um, another interesting one, Justin, that we, we've talked about before is App Store. Yeah, App Store is, so the, App Store is a really interesting one because this one, there was a lawsuit about it, which you'll know more about than I do, but this was probably the fast, I mean, to me, this seems like the fastest one because it, there was a it short died, window like, of time. Yeah. Right. There was a short window of time where app was not like, you know, people didn't know what that was. And then all of a sudden, there's no other word for app and an app store must be where you buy it. But if there was, right. Where else are you going to buy an app? Right. It, I mean, that's really a descriptive mark. And it, uh, it happened fast, though. It did happen fast. They, Apple sued Amazon in 2011 and ended up just giving up in about 2013. Um, right, and now everybody has an app store. But Apple really has the last laugh. I don't think they needed that trademark anyway. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah, because I guess, well, anyway, I, I will hold my judgment on what people think of when you hear the word app store, so. Okay, well, the, the last one that I'm gonna mention is TV dinner. Yes. Now, not only did that one die, but I think the TV dinner itself died. Uh, yeah, because gross, but amazing, <laughs> amazing, like amazing. Like I, I you know, know, hopefully everybody that's listening can, you know, can still hear that plastic coming off. I think you have to be a certain age to really appreciate the little apple yeah, copper. Yeah, that and then you're like, oh, look, this part is still frozen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, there is definitely a, um, a, yes, TV dinners. I'm glad that both the product and the, uh, and the trademark. <laughs> the mark has died. That's sad. Um, but 
what's also interesting is these are trademarks that already died. We we know that. Yeah. But aren't there a bunch of trademarks that are actually susceptible to? Yeah, before, before we jump to those, up? though, like I have a theory on the marks that are most susceptible to this happening. Okay, it, let's hear it. It seems to me that um, what's happened is a lot of times you you have, there are a few exceptions on here, but like escalator, um, trampoline, mm -hmm. zipper, those seem like things that somebody invented. Like they, a lot of times these, these products that are really susceptible to becoming generic were things that did not exist. Like somebody invented something and then they made right. up a name to That's call true. it. And so what happens is that you have like a trampoline. There was nothing like that, or even a zipper. There's nothing like that. And then all of a sudden people don't have a word to easily describe it. Plus you would have had a patent. So, <clears throat> excuse me, presumably they would have some market exclusivity there. So that trademark becomes really, really strong, but then there's no other word. There was never a word before. Like, I think it would be much more difficult for, uh, you know, let, let's take like Walmart, right? Like Walmart's monstrous, right? Like superstore or whatever. Somehow we'll end up owning yeah. the whole world, right? Like, well, but it still seems very difficult that that you'd come to a period of time where everybody would just say, well, I'm going to Walmart, even if they were going to Target, right? Because, or the, I'm going to the store, meaning they're going to Walmart, because that existed and this, the concept of a store existed for a long time. So people know the difference. So it, it seems harder if you're in an existing field with an existing product or service. For this so it'd be happen. interesting. I mean, I think you're right. It would be interesting to see if once the patents expired, if that's when the term really became genericized for something like a zipper. Or, um, an I don't know, but it, I, or, or it's just that that was the only product and people didn't have another word and nobody ever, like you didn't, nothing ever. Right, but I'm saying once the competitors just, started manufacturing their right, own. Right, right, right. And then there's no other word to describe it. And so right. that, yeah, exactly. So when it comes off patent and then the competitors come in and that, yeah, I mean, but let's talk about, so anyway, that's my kind of theory. And that's like thermos, like people wouldn't have run into an insulated, what did you call it, a vacuum flask, mm -hmm. a vacuum flask before that time. And so when they first encounter this, it's called a thermos, then it's thermos, if you know, thermos had, was the only, you know, place right. selling this for a long period of time, then that becomes the word because people never bothered or were taught what it actually is. But so. there, there are now trademarks that are on the, on the edge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They're on the, the cusp. Maybe they're hanging on life support. Um, <laughs> what what do you got? What, let's go through some of these. Well, you, you tell me what, what's your, your favorite right. one on our list. My, the one that to me that comes to mind is, is Band-Aid. And it, it, I know, I know Johnson & Johnson has that, but it feels like Band-Aid might, you know, there might be an education campaign in the works there to teach people to say bandage. I don't know. I mean, if you're just going to rip the bandaid off, you're not just right. rip it. Someone just put up in the chat. I liked what they said that zoom is on the edge. And I think they're actually, that that's raises a very good point. You know, and that would be one of the fastest ones. If that, if that's true, if zoom is actually um, on the edge, that would be one of the fastest ones because it, you know, video conferencing is a hard, it doesn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue. It, like let's have a Zoom a, meeting. Right, right. And there's not a good word to say, hey, I'm gonna jump on a like video, a guess, call? video call, but then sometimes not everybody's on video. I don't know. That, and that's Zoom is more right. fun to say than video call. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh let's see. One Q tip was one that came to mind. Q tip. So you mentioned band-aid um and q tip. I think both of those, no one says. So you said the generic term for Band-Aid is what, bandage? I think it's bandage, yeah. Like a, but bandage describes, I don't know, I think of a big white wrapped bandage around the arm. I don't think of a little tiny, you know, adhesive, adhesive bandage maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, but. Maybe. Um, oh, and you said Q-tip. Q-tip, you know. I think I actually, do. I don't know. I think I go back and forth saying cotton swab or Q-tip. 
Then you're the only person I know who says I'm the only person. That wouldn't be the first time it's happened. <laughs> um, I think, like, I think chapstick is also one that, mm -hmm. um, because I'm actually blanking on the lip balm. Lip balm, yeah. <laughs> but no one says, do you have any lip balm? They say. Right, right. But I feel like lip balm's a little bit different anyway i don't i don't know but i feel like that one might be in a um that one might have some uh some issues too uh yeah i think so let's see uh crock pot is an interesting one it is an interesting one i, I don't Although, even really like that mark particularly but what is it a slow cooker yeah it's a slow cooker but i wonder if instapot has saved crock pot oh Right, that because was, now, now I've heard people saying like, you know, put it, something in the Instapot, right, a lot, as opposed to Crock-Pot. So maybe a generational advancement has saved the Crock-Pot. <laughs> maybe not the company, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Another one we had on here was Onesies. So Onesies I like that one. by Gerber. So this one's interesting. I, I kind of want to look into this one a bit more, but but you know, you hear a lot of people saying onesies for for an, an infant outfit, right? Um, and, and, so, and sometimes an adult outfit. I, I'm I, just saying. Maybe we we maybe we hang out with different people. I don't know that I've ever heard that, but for a kid, for sure. Like I don't know what else you call it. What else do you? I call don't know it? what a body an infant body suit. A body suit. There we go. And so so yeah, the, but that's like you know, it's a good one. Uh, scotch tape. I feel like you go, you know, scotch tape, like, mm -hmm. fortunately you, should, you have tape. So tape usually does it, but it's- Right, you can just say right. tape. That one, I don't think it's as close as some of the others, but, you know, I've definitely heard people use scotch tape, like completely agnostic to whatever is available to describe. Well, so what, like, what about, um, yeah, I, I think that one, you know, scotch is the brand, but can you name any other brands of- clear adhesive tape that's a really interesting way to uh to go about it mm -hmm. and honestly no i i don't i don't know exactly so that could be uh yeah that that that's an interesting uh way, way to look at that so um let's see what you, what you have any other ones bubble wrap i like okay. that one i, don't I mean i don't even really know what bubble wrap made, is but. I'm not sure I realized that was a trademark, but that makes sense. And like, what else are you going to call that? Plastic. Inflated wrap. cushioning, yeah. inflated. Right. <laughs> Those little pot, you know, kids love popping them. Yes. Yes. So. Um, which is, I think their primary use, but. What about um, ping pong? Okay. I. Uh, that's another one. I don't actually know table tennis, like. and occasionally you'll hear someone say table tennis, but usually yeah, yeah I, don't I don't know that I realized ping pong was a trademark. Um, yeah, it's owned by Parker Brothers. Okay, so the, that one, yeah, because are the tournaments called table tennis tournaments? Or are they? I don't know. I would have to look at that. I, I'll bet yeah, they're that one, I, I agree. I think that one's on. That one's could be in danger. Um, if there is somebody out there willing to challenge it. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's sort of the, the thing, right? Um, yeah. Well, do you want to, uh, what, why don't we do, um, see if we can do a poll. Like we okay. might not be able to do this, but let's see if we could do a poll. This would just be a, um, no pun intended, generic poll. And we'll just ask one of these and see what people think. Okay. so. Uh, Sharon, pick one. All right. It's on our list here, and then we'll just see what people think. Okay, I'm gonna pick popsicle. Do you think that popsicle is in danger of being generic? And so, to the audience, feel free to vote yes or no. Do you have any others that we uh, want to ask our oh, audience about? Should. So, okay, 86% oh. think uh, that it's in, in danger of being generic. So yeah, that's a good one. And do you, know what the, do you know what the generic term is for Popsicle? It's actually ice pop. 
Oh, ice pop. I was going to say like frozen sugar or water. I don't know. <laughs> ice pop. Okay. So that is, that's tricky. Let's go, well, let's go back and do another one of these. Um, what right. about, uh, what about another chapstick? Let's do chapstick. See if people think. I think we did. Is. We did chapstick. No, but see I'm saying like a, a poll on it because we oh, talked okay. about it. All right. We'll see whatever. So I guess we, we have influenced people. I know. But, um, but, but maybe they disagree. People, maybe people disagree. use. Um, I can't even think of another one. I've got another one we can do right after this one. So okay. but let's vote on if you think chapstick is in danger. Ninety one percent. So that's even better. Yeah. Okay. Let's do let's do one more. Or do you have any others? Let's do one more. Let's do one more. I think we should do taser. Taser. Yeah. Do you think that taser is in danger of being generic? What is the generic term for a taser? You're influencing our poll. Our if poll. there is a generic term for what <laughs> i think it's a stun is it a stun gun i'm not even oh 100 oh, wow yeah wow okay that's interesting i don't even know if there is another brand for stun guns i'm sure there is but but that okay that's pretty that's, that uh, yeah yeah for a uh a sample size that is probably not uh um good enough for science that's that's pretty <laughs> overwhelming so, well, sounds good. Well, let's see, let's see if uh, people have any questions for us here. Um, in the Q, if you have a question, just put it in the Q and A, and we'll we'll answer those. Um, but this has been fun. This is a fun one to talk about because it is because such weird things can happen. Um, when when well, here, here's a question, work. Justin. Um, is there a deep pocketed competitor willing to pay for a legal challenge? So that was, you know, that's sort of to our point about ping pong. I don't know who would challenge Parker Brothers for that. Yeah, so, so some of these it does require, like Escalator is a good example, right? So Escalator, you can see how a competitor came in, was having trouble describing what it sold mm -hmm. to people, and it's a really expensive, I assume it's expensive, I'm, I hope it's expensive device, and they didn't have a good way to describe it. And so there would be a challenger available to that. Um, contrast that with, what were we talking about? We were talking about, like contrast that with ping pong. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I, it, may, it may be my ignorance in the world of ping pong, so. Um, right. I mean, and there are companies, so we didn't talk about Kleenex or Xerox. I mean, these are terms yeah, again, that have entered common lexicon. No, but let's talk about Xerox because Xerox is an interesting one. Um, I remember, I remember actually sitting in like the admissions office back when I was in, applying to law school mm -hmm. and reading a, one of those like legal magazines about how Xerox was doing at that time they were doing a whole campaign about you know don't use our mark in this way you know that kind of thing it was like a save our trademark thing right and the, I mean they spent a lot of money like educating people not to say hey I need to Xerox something um and I think that's how they turned it around in part but then you know the ironing be irony being that I'm not sure that any photocopies anything anymore so there might have been other issues there but but well, that's a really I mean that's an interesting way to deal with it and it sort of goes to a question that we were just asked which is do you have advice to a successful brand to retain its trademark you know does it need to dial back its popularity in essence and I don't think that it does, but it's going to cost a lot of marketing dollars and a lot, right. and it's going to require some very clever marketing tools, not so much to dial back the popularity, but to ensure that the consuming public is using it in the way that it's intended to be used. Right. So the, it would be an example of that. Um, the idea would be to, assuming, you know, you don't want to use it as a verb, for instance. Right. And people tend to, it's the same thing where, you know, a lot of times people will talk about Google, but. And some people do say Googling things, but um, but it's it's once there's no other word and 
And I think a lot of people still are saying searching and that kind of thing. It's this concept where all of a sudden there's not another word available and people don't realize that people aren't. I, don't know. I think Google is problematic too. I do say I'm going to Google it, even if I'm intending to go on Bing or Yahoo. Half the time, I don't think people even realize which browser they're using because on their computer, whatever the default browser is, it pulls up. You may not even know what the search engine is. That's true. So, so but, but I think that, you know, so if you have Google a really successful doing? brand and it doesn't have to be world famous, it can be a niche brand that's very successful and, and almost has a monopoly, you know, it, it can happen there. But I do think that educating people like Xerox did where, you know, they're putting in front of people, hey, it's a photocopier. It's a photocopier. It's a photocopier. Right. So that people do have a word available and they think about that marketing and they're like, oh, that's right. This is what that's called is how you combat that. But it's, it's, if you find yourself in that position, that's a great place to be. It um, is because you're is, probably making, because if you lose that trademark. Gonna, well, yeah. Even if you're going to lose your mark, you're still probably making bazillion dollars because you're the only right. product out there that people really know. And I mean, unless advertising. Yeah, it, it, it's all about advertising. And I think it would cost a lot of money, but you'd want to come up with a really clever slogan to attack the proposition that your mark has become generic. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, know what that sure. would look like. I'm not a marketing person. Yeah. But uh, well, another thing that you can do, like a like a real world practical thing you can do is just make sure, and this is just part of good trademark hygiene, mm -hmm. is in all of your marketing materials, you should never use your trademark as the word to describe the product you're selling. Exactly. So, so you should always say, in the example we said, Xerox, you know, a photocopier for blah, 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 so that it's always clear that you're selling this product, you're your branding you're selling a photocopier product. that's branded as Xerox. And so we, we just got a comment um, from someone who said that as a kid, I did not know Kleenex was a brand. I thought that is what we call tissue. Same with me. I never use the term tissue. I'm not even sure if it's supposed to be called facial tissue or just tissue, but I just refer to it as Kleenex. And Kleenex, the company, would really need to turn that around um, by talking about how they sell Kleenex brand as the softest tissue or something along those lines to really right. reemphasize that point. Right. So you start to emphasize that what the actual name is, and, and it's basically a campaign to teach people what the name is. But in, in most companies, it's just making sure that, you know, you're not using your, your trademark in a sentence as though it's, it's the subject of the sentence. Exactly. You, you or, the describe, or the verb. Right. You always need to describe your product in terms of the actual words that describe it and make it clear that yours is a brand. And that's just part of good trademark hygiene. Um, so you don't self-sabotage. I would agree with that. At the end of the day, it's not a terrible problem to have, um, but it's still a problem. And yeah, uh, yeah. well, this has been- Yeah, this, this is a fun one. So- Yeah, thank you for um, attending. If anyone has any follow-up comments or questions, please feel free to call or email Justin or myself anytime. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Bye.